So, Kenya, what was your uh, college recruitment process like, and how'd you end up <laughs> landing on Cincinnati? A lot different than a lot of people's shit. <laughs> mm -hmm. I told y'all I caught a bus to the Greyhound to a, a B C D camp, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, you were here. Yeah, I caught a Greyhound to from Dallas to New Jersey. Wow. To go to A B C D camp. Wow. Yeah, I, I got a flight home, but I caught a bus <laughs> <Wow>. there. <laughs> so, now nah, I wasn't known, man. I, I, I wasn't. I didn't have a name, but I just played a certain way. So if they came to see you play. Mm -hmm. They was mm -hmm. gonna see me, mm -hmm. like, and that was just the way it was. I showed up, and and you know back then, uh, the thing was, he good, but it's what his grades look like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why he said he got eleven twenty on his SAT. I was like, damn, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? I wasn't in the school. Like I went to school and did the bare minimum so I could play basketball. Yeah, like that's just what it was. Like I. I, if they told me that I didn't have to go and I could still play, mm -hmm. I would have picked option B <laughs> for sure, That's right? Real. But, like, I signed to go to Cincinnati without ever stepping foot on the campus as well, right? Because every school that would have a name or something that, that wanted me, they stopped recruiting me because they didn't have no grades, right? That's the thing. Oh, he can play, he's good, but he ain't got no grades. He ain't got no grades. So, Bob Huggins and them was like, I don't care. I like what I see, and I'm still recruiting. And and John Chaney did the same thing. So it came down to Temple and Cincinnati for me. And why did you pick Cincinnati over Temple? Because John Chaney and them said they practiced at like 5 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> like oh, yeah. He was one of them. Dead ass serious. Like, dead, no other decision, whatever wow. he... After he said that shit, I turned everything he said after that off. <laughs> 5 a.m. a little bit early. Dead ass, look. For those who are trying he to... He said it, I said, oh, I, my mind, oh, ain't no way I'm going there. <laughs> you, ne you never asked him about no. it? No. There was nothing else to talk about. Wow. No, it was five, whatever time it was, it was before basketball <laughs> started for me. That was yeah. and nobody should pre, be pre basketball. And nobody hour. should be playing basketball at that hour, in my opinion. <laughs> at that you just told this to a 17, 18 year old kid. Yeah. Right? That fucking hate school for one, and you just told me I'm gonna come and you go get me up to go. Yeah. Five, yeah. No. You got, you're at five AM and then technically you have to go to class. Class, after, yeah. yeah no, I just don't see. Peep this. So I I get to that. So but but hugs them said in the living room, man. He was this is what it is. We got a scholarship for him. No, his grades ain't like this, but we got a there's a way that he can enroll in school and still take his tests. So I was like, oh shit, I'm in, right? You offered me a scholarship already, mm -hmm. even though I ain't got my grades, and you figured out a way that I could steal, and if not, I would have prop. So yeah, I would have to sit out my whole fresh meal, but it worked out. Um, yeah, I signed to go to Cincinnati, man. Like, Bob Huggins was watching him coach from afar and just seeing her and certain shit. Just like, oh, shit. And that was, because to me, like, it was either go to junior college or that. And me going to junior college would have been in Texas. Mm -hmm. Where? You just pick any one of them was too okay. close to Dallas. Okay. Like, give a fuck where it was. Mm -hmm. Like, San Jose, any, any of them was too close to Dallas. Mm. And everything that I had seen was guys going, because didn't nobody have grades where I'm from. Mm -hmm. Guys going and they ass back home. That's all I had seen. Dudes going for a semester, yeah. for a year. Yeah. And that was it. That's all I had seen. So my thing was I gotta get the fuck out of Dallas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I graduated high school. I was in Cincinnati two weeks after I graduated high school, bro. I graduated, they wow. sent me a plane ticket, and I fucking <laughs> left. I went back to Dallas one time in four years, though. Wow. When I went to Cincinnati, yeah. I went to Cincinnati. I went back once in four years. Yeah, like you were done. Because there was nothing positive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? This man offered me a scholarship to go, I ain't... Wow. Nobody, I ain't know, didn't nobody else go to where I'm from? Mm -hmm. Shit didn't happen. So this is man recruited me, and it was, it was that. And I showed up. Which is crazy, because most kids are like, I got to get home. Yep. Every chance they get, I am going home. home. And you know when it was? Spring break of my freshman year. Mm. It was the one time you went back to that. We lost in the tournament. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know, they had already gave us the time off for school and all that. And I went, for, I went home for spring break. Like, that was, that was the, my freshman year. Mm. 
But now Bob Huggins, man, like I just saw him when I went back to Cincinnati the other day. I just talked to him yesterday. Like that, that's him, right? Believed, saw, believed, offered. Now my jersey's hanging up in that bitch. So how about that? I'm talking about sure. Very how good about decision, that? right? So sure, how about? I was three and a half points as a freshman too. Let's throw <laughs> three and a half. <laughs> Growth. That's my story, though. Yeah. So, Gil, see you rocking the Arizona jersey. Thank God. Woo -hoo. You were, you were kind of under the radar, which is wild to say. Mm -hmm. High school, going to Grand High School here in the San Fernando Valley. How did you end up going from Grand High School to the University of Arizona? Uh, yeah, so I was being recruited by CSUN, of course. A great so, school. Shout out Bobby Braswell. I was, uh, I was Bobby? CSUN. Okay. Bobby Braswell, just local. Okay. Guy. Um, a lot of our first letters <laughs> coming up. First letters, yep. Um, and second and third. Because I didn't play on the AAU circuit like that. Um, I played in adult league, so um, I was locally known. And the coach from um, this, you know, one of his recruiters was recruiting me, and then he called me and said, hey, I'm getting a job at Kansas State. You're going to be my first recruit. So he went there. Sure enough, a weekend, a weekend later, He's hitting me, sending me letters. So I'm like, oh, shit, I'm going to Kansas State now, y'all. So I'm in there, Kansas State up. And then, like, junior, that my junior year, playoffs, playing against y'all, Crenshaw. And um, going against Crenshaw, number one, D, y'all like number one defense, number one that year, Definitely right? number one in the city, right? Yeah. You guys like the 16th seed, if I'm not So uh, everyone was like, if he's any good, he'll have 15. Right. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, it was one of those, yeah, beat the fuck out them. <laughs> uh, individually tore them wow. apart, right? So after that, <clears throat> everyone came, right? And then I went, ended up going to, what, the big time tournament, playing with E.J. Harris and them, and then had, like, uh, at the half, had 50 against Marvin Stone, Kevin Gaines. Yep, Kevin Remember Gaines that? from Michigan. Yeah, so I scored 50. I didn't they play the first half. Ass. Yeah, I didn't play in the first half, so they Ooh. put me in in the second half because I just got to the team, and then I just went amongst. They told me not pass the ball, just go. So when I got back, like, a lot of teams started calling. So um, DePaul came through. DePaul came through. Uh, Pat Kennedy started hitting me. Um, then, obviously, USC. Mike B uh, Henry Bimby. Henry Bimby was sitting uh, in a whole bunch of... A lot of letters every day. Uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> packs of it. Yeah, you right? get the handwritten, make you feel appreciated. Shout out Henry Bibby. So I went and took at that, at the, like, towards the summer, like, first time we can go, I went to go visit Kansas State. Um, of course, and then when I was getting ready to go visit um, DePaul, Arizona came in. Um, Lou Dawson came, had the ring, damn near broke my glass, little glass table, right? Hit it on there, you know, I looked at my dad, <laughs> like, oh shit, you almost broke it. <laughs> and then first thing he said is like, uh, I never seen you play. Uh, I had to watch your highlights on the, um, on the plane here. You're the type of guard we want. You're third in line. We want um, Kevin Gaines first, Jimmy Hayward second, you third. Um, we, we're looking for that combo style guard. So I was like, okay. And then they told me the recruiting class. We got number one point guard in the country coming, Jason. We have um, uh, Lou Recker is going to tr transfer here. Um, Mr. Indiana at the time. Uh, I think Iowa, right? Yeah. No, no. Oh. He's, he oh, he's Mr. Indiana. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. So he came from Indiana to us. Um, and then they had Juco runner-up player of the year, Lamont Frazier. So it was basically then the guard heavy. Mm. Um, and then when I was getting ready to go visit uh, DePaul, Pat Kennedy's mother passed. So his mother passed. Mm. So I called Arizona. I was like, well, you know, can I come visit? I'm not doing anything. They was like, sure, come on. Went there. And we ended up having like a little scrimmage. We ended up having a scrimmage, and I'm torching. I was just too fucking fast for it. Uh, it was like uh, Ruben Douglas there, <laughs> Mike Bibby. Um, I don't know why they were there, though, because Mike Bibby was already in the NBA. But this, uh, when, when did you do it? Probably late in the summer? Or, or it was like summer. It had to be in the summer because they were there playing. Yeah. I remember Michael Dickerson. I was like, man, you should play on a team. And it's like, uh, I was like, you play on a football team? And it was like, no, nah, that's Mike Bibby playing for the Grizzlies. Yeah. Right? Okay. Uh, Vancouver, I yeah, think at the time. Yeah. Um, and then I called my dad. When I got back home, I was like, y'all, do suck. Right? He knew who I was talking about because um, Ruben Douglas, 
he was like the number one dude yep. here, and I was behind him in scoring, and we faced off my junior year, and I hit him for a quadruple double, like 46, 12, 12, and 10, right? So uh, when I went there and matched up against him, realized, oh, yeah, you still, you still can't guard me. So when I got back home, I told my dad, I'm going there if they recruited me. My dad was like, nah, man, no. They have this, 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 throwing all that. I was like, but he the starter, and I can get him. I can get that position. And my dad was like, nah, I think we should just go to Kansas State. You know, they, they promised you 1,000 minutes as a freshman. I was like, I don't know what the fuck that even mean, 1,000 minutes. What do you mean? He's like, DePaul, I really want to go to DePaul because my dad's sister was getting scholarship too. Right, if I went there, I should have got a, a scholarship. And then after I left there, uh, Coach Olson said, at this point, after we've seen you play, the first one out of you three to commit were taken. So I got the phone call, my dad, he said, the first three, dog. Wow. I was like, are you sure? I was like, man, he's the only one who said I can be a pro. He said, he said we'll redshirt you this year, four years, then you can be like Jason Terry, his number 10 pick in the draft. I was like, Cool. My dad was like, well, I didn't go then. <laughs> Called him and said, I'm in. Hung up. And the rest is history. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So I was going there to red shirt. So I was going there red shirt and do the Jason Terry, Terry flow. Did you red shirt your first year? <laughs> Led the team to scoring. You know? <laughs> Led the team to scoring. <laughs> But can you talk about, I think for us, those of us who saw you, like I remember that Crenshaw game, full court press, you dropped like 40 and three quarters. Mm -hmm. But, you know, seeing you play, I think, with pumps and different squads and AAU style, like it was always just like, who is this dude? Kind of an anomaly, but under the radar. So I wasn't pretty necessarily surprised to see you be successful. Yeah. But a little bit at Arizona, just kind of with their the prestige yeah. and background. And I remember, I remember there was, there was uh, like it let me really know, like, damn, I need to really tap in. I'm at Venice Beach, go there every weekend, right? Go there. And there's a dude, his name was like, you ever do the Sydney? His name was like Sydney something, can jump out the gym. He was like the Venice Beach Michael Jordan dog. No. Um, he did one of those little Nike commercials with like the Matrix back in when that, mm -hmm. that Nike commercial. So me and, my, me and my boys used to go up there just to watch, watch him. And we'll try to get on the court like, like noon and then try to stay on to like, get that first game where it's, it's really competitive, then we lose, and then that's it, right? And I remember, uh, like, I'm scoring, talking shit, like, you, like, I'm getting them, dog. And then uh, he's like, dog, you trash. I ain't trash. I'm going to Arizona. The way he laughed at me, like, he, like, literally broke out in just real humor laughter mm -hmm. and said, Ludo sitting there taking no girl like you dog and just laughed. I looked at my boy and like his face, like he wanted to swing on him. My face is like, dog, I must be trashed here. <laughs> no, we went home, dog. I said, man, I'm never leaving the gym again. <laughs> like, like he's laughing at me. Like he probably seen me play before. Whatever he's seen right here ain't even good enough. Because, like, he knew the coach, he knew the style, and said, I ain't it. Oh, nah. Mm. Like, genuine giggle and laughing, dog. <laughs> like, mm. Sure. Wow. Like, um, so you went home, right? Uh-huh. I went to Cincinnati. Like I said, I went to Cincinnati two weeks after I graduated. The team at the time, they went on this trip to Europe. Incoming freshmen couldn't go. So I was in Cincinnati by myself. I went home. They had me a little job. I stayed up. I got me a plane ticket. I bought me a one-way ticket home. Mm -hmm. A one-way ticket. A one-way. Huh. I wasn't going back. Yeah. <laughs> they hugged and got back, was looking for me. <laughs> I was supposed to be doing tutoring and all kind mm -hmm. of shit. I was in Dallas, bro. They called my sister and I'm like, uh, is, is, by chance, is he there? Wow. They like, yeah. Is he there? They, they like, yeah. <laughs> they like, where's the plane ticket waiting on them at the airport? My sister drove my ass to the airport and dropped me the fuck off. <laughs> going Almost back to Tito Maddox. Home? I was home. I was homesick. Home yeah. I was in Cincinnati by my. Listen, they had me living in the house with people I did not know. Sure. Were you? Were you the only incoming? <laughs> yes. In that year? Yes. Yo, I lived in the house when I first got there mm -mm. with three people. I had a fucking like, room he in said a house. One way ticket. With people I did not know. Wow. I was going to this little job, studying with this little white man that I was giving hell to. 
Yo, it was a surprise that man told Hugs and tell Hugs and man, don't bring him back over here. <laughs> <laughs> it is amazing that that man sat there and took that abuse day in, day out. Wow. Day in, day out. Why were you so mean to him? Because you didn't want to be there? I was 18. Sure. I know. I, I know. Was it because you, you, you didn't want to be there? I did not want to be mm. there. Like, this shit was the worst, but... Damn. Yeah, but I went. I took my ass to Dallas, man. I left. Like, <laughs> That's crazy that incoming freshmen couldn't go.